Welcome. This brief video provides an exploration of how the standard deviation changes if you add or remove a value or set of values from the data set. Let's start by imagining that we have a small data set of 25 values, n equals 25. Let's further assume that this data set has a mean of x bar equals 10 and a standard deviation of s equals 4. Now, let's add a new value to the data set. The new value, x sub 26, is the number 10, which happens to equal the mean of the data. First question, what happens to the mean when we add this value? Second question, does the standard deviation change? And next part of this question, if it changes, does it go up or down? Pause the video here to reflect on your answers for these two questions. Welcome back. Let's see how your responses align with my approach to answering these questions. For the first question, the mean would stay the same. If we think about the mean of the sample using the balance beam analogy, the data laid out along a balance beam would balance perfectly at the position 10. And we know this even if we don't know the actual location of the data values along the balance beam. So if you add a value at that fulcrum, at the balance point of 10, then the balance remains as is, and thus the mean is still 10. The mean is unchanged by adding a value that equals the mean. For the second question, the standard deviation would go down because you are adding a number that equals the mean. So the amount the numbers are spread out from the mean is getting smaller on average for all values in the data set. Another way to think about this is that the deviation for the new value would be zero, and adding zero to the sum of deviations is going to leave the numerator unchanged but the total sample size and the denominator are getting bigger. Thus, the standard deviation decreases when we add a value that equals the mean. This is true for however many values we add that exactly equal the mean. If we use the milepost analogy, we've added a value that has no additional distance from the milepost. So the overall average of distances, if you will, from the milepost has gone down a little bit. Now, Let's make life a little bit trickier. Let's start again from scratch with our original sample of n equals 25. Now we will add two values. x sub 26 is the value 14, and x sub 27 is the value 6. We will ask the same two questions as above. What happens to the mean when we add these two values? And what happens to the standard deviation, if anything, when we add these two values? Again, pause the video here to reflect on your answers to these queries. Welcome back. Let's see how your responses align with my approach to answering these questions. As before, the mean will stay the same. This is because the two new values are equally spaced in either direction from the mean. Thus, the balance point will remain at the original value of 10. Mathematically, we could also work it out. We know that the sum of the first 25 values was n times the mean, which is 25 times 10, or 250. If we add to this the two new values 14 and 6, which together add up to 20, this takes the total sum from 250 to 270. Now we divide by 27 instead of the original 25, since there are two more values in our updated data set. And 270 divided by 27 indeed is the original value of 10. The mean indeed remains unchanged. Very good, but now what is the standard deviation? Let's think this through using a combination of the milepost analogy and the balance beam perspective. Here's the mean at the balance point for the balance beam. Now let's add our new values at 6 and 14, points that are equidistant away from the mean, equidistant from the balance point. Well, if we look at how far these values are from the mean, ignoring direction for a moment, we see that they are both exactly one standard deviation away from the mean. Using the average distance from a milepost analogy, this means the average distance away from the milepost remains one full standard deviation. In other words, the standard deviation remains unchanged with the addition of these two values. For those who wish to skip the mathematics of the proof for this, you can skip ahead to timestamp 559. First, let's write out the formula for the sum of square deviations for a sample. 
Starting with the standard deviation formula, we will square both sides and multiply both sides by the difference of n minus 1. This gives us a formula for the sum of the squared deviations for the first n terms. Now, we note that the squared deviations for each of the new terms are negative s squared and positive s squared, both of which equal s squared. The new total sums of squared deviations is the difference n minus 1 times s squared plus s squared plus s squared, all divided by the difference n minus 1 plus 2. The numerator is just the sum n plus 1 times s squared, and the denominator is n plus 1. Canceling and taking the square root, we see that the standard deviation is still just s. It remains unchanged. One key point to note in both of these calculations is that we were able to analyze the standard deviation because the mean remained unchanged from the first data set to the second data set. If that assumption or that result were violated, our analyses would have to be conducted in a very different and much more complicated manner. Recall from a previous discussion, we saw that the mean is not resistant to the presence of outliers. In one of the module activities for the module on descriptive statistics for normal data, we will explore this idea a bit further, but we will note here that the standard deviation is really not resistant to the presence of outliers. In other words, in the presence of outliers, the standard deviation can be extremely distorted. Thank you for your time.